Becky Sue Epstein is joining us today on Wine and Dine. Becky Sue, international wine, spirit, food, travel editor and author. And today she's joining us from the Relais Franciacorta Hotel. And actually, I made a boo-boo that she wants to bring up is, is their biggest, one of their biggest marketing issues. And I didn't study Italian grow up, so I kind of, growing up, so I kind of learn as I go with interviews that it's not pronounced Francia Corta, it's Francia Corta. And Becky Sue, thank you so very much for joining us today. And you say that the wines have been very good and the food is positively amazing in the region of Francia Corta. Yeah, it really is. It's nice to be here. Hi, Lynn. Um, I'm in Francia Corta, and it's, when you look at it, it's hard to pronounce because it's all one word, but if you say Francia Corta, Francia okay. Corta. Okay, I've got it in my brain now. It's pretty simple, but that is one of their biggest hurdles in marketing. They, you know, people look at it, they say a long word beginning in F, and then they trail off and don't know <laughs> what to do. <laughs> well, we'll try and help that process here. I really think we should, because I, as you know, I like all things sparkling. So yes. I've been trying these wines and all the lesser and better known sparkling wines around Europe whenever I have a chance. And people have been coming and going to front of court, just kind of, kind of getting it on their radar. And I just hadn't been that impressed until I got here. I have to say, these wines are, they're, they're not low-level wines. They're not high-level wines. They are solid, solid, mid-tier, something between your everyday sparkling and your um, fine, uh, nice champagnes. Okay. And the, yeah. It, there's, a, there's a range, but you're going to find them in 20 to 35 $40 yes. a bottle. Okay, and, that, and that's what kind of I see available in, in my market is that price range. But are the majority of them, or, or are they all produced in the classic method, or are any of them using transfer or Charmat method? They're all produced in the classic, um, um, classic method, which means they do their, just like in Champagne, the second fermentation in the bottle, and they add a dosage and everything like that. Only, because we're a little farther south, a few degrees latitude south here, even though it's on the on the edge of the, the southern edge of the Alps. We're actually, Francia Corta is about an hour east, northeast of Milan in the Lakes District. And no, I didn't see George Clooney, but I'm sure he's here somewhere. Whoa! <laughs> and um, anyhow, it's, it's a little tiny district on a lake that's not that well-known called um, Lake Iseo. But they are just enough south and that their grapes ripen a little more so that they don't need to add the uh, sugar that's added often in champagne in the final, what they call the dosage in the final um, um, part of the process. So that a lot of the wines here are the very trendy extra brut or brut zero oh, or non dosé, pas dosé, they're by a million different names for it because okay. they really have nice rounded flavors. We're dealing with mainly Chardonnay here. Oh, good. Some, okay. Yeah, some Pinot Noir and some Pinot Bianco, which is also Pinot Blanc. Mm, 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 you lucky, lucky woman. So, um, as I said, there, there's just been a, a big range, and the um, it's a tiny little district. I mean, you know, they've got just, you know, 70% of the wine that they make is consumed within two or three hours of where they make it. <laughs> So wow. not that much is getting out to the U.S. We'll see, you know, okay. there are 106 producers. We'll see three in the U.S., oh, you know, and, and yes. they're trying to ramp that up now. Maybe okay. there'll be 10 next year and 20 next year, the year okay. after and 50. Okay. Okay. And so here you are at the tail end of June. What is the weather like during the day and during the night? And let me ask you, are are you like... Where you're at, since there's there's a lake, I'm assuming that there is is there somewhat of a valley where the lake is, and the vineyards go up, or you know, how, what's the elevation? Yeah, like? exactly. It's kind of a bowl that was carved out by a, a glacier. Um, so it's what they call muranic soil, not moronic soil, which we keep saying. 
But there are, you know, pockets of sand and gravel and, and calcium stuff, and this whole lake was carved out by a glacier millions of years ago. And all of the Franciacorta uh, vineyards are on a bowl surrounding the lake, and which you okay. can really see. I mean, it's very, very clear if you just get up a few hundred feet on, on a hill or, or in a hotel or, or on a monastery. And, and and look down. Is there any well? How is the lake situated with respect to the uh, the east west uh, sun coming up and going down? Or, well, actually, the the lake is pretty tiny, and I can't actually see it from here. There there is a little bit of a, a, a range of hills there, um, but it does. It's very deep. It's something like is it two hundred fifty? It's like as deep as one of, as one of the Finger Lakes. So it wow. really keeps the region moderated. Like two, is that two hundred fifty feet? Something like that okay. keeps the region moderated in winter, and the breezes come off the some of the Alps and some of the lake in the summer. And I was just in a really interesting vineyard where they are up high enough so that they've got really. Um, temperature fluctuations day to night and the most acidity in any grapes they were very very champagne like most of them most of these wines some people don't like that sharp acidity I most do. of these wines are a little rounder a little fruitier okay. um, and they may be more accessible to to people that pucker up easily oh i like the sharp acidity of those kind of wines it goes better with richer food now let me ask you what kind of um. Uh, what do I want to say? Maturation on the lees. Do they? I oh, mean, yeah. they'll go two, three, four, five years with maturation on the lees. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they're you know they're extending their um they're they're just fine tuning all the requirements more and more um every few okay. years. Uh, it I mean they have not every. Not every wine does that, but right. they have non-vintage. They have vintage. They tend to look at wines that are maybe four, three, four, five years old for their basic non-vintage brute and then blend in older and younger wines from that. Okay. And, um, it, it's, you know, it, this whole French Accord was only invented in 1961. This is not an ancient thing we're having here. And they've been fine-tuning and fine-tuning it. And, you know, so every year it gets um, a little better. And um, it got its DOCG, which is the highest quality guarantee status, only a, a few years ago. And that's, they've really been working for this. You're not going to find people bootstrapping these. You're going to find people that have families and that have, their families have owned land here for um, years and years, maybe 100 years, maybe more. And, they're, and they sort of realize that they could make this great wine. They were capable of understanding what the end product was that people wanted to drink. So uh, a bubbly is so fashionable. There is, there's a lot of rosé here. Oh, there's, really? Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's really, really pretty pale apricot because they only use a tiny bit of Pinot Noir. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. Uh, let me see. What, oh, so to, what is the temperature like during, during the day and at night where you're at? Or, or, well, I think it's, it's pretty not moderated, but like on the east coast of the U.S., at this moment there's a heat wave going on here. So, okay. you know. Okay. They, just, they just have it. But I do want to talk about food for one second. Yes, I yes. really feel like I never truly understood ravioli until I got here. <laughs> they have, it's not called ravioli. It has a, it has another name. But basically it's a, a stuffed, um, a stuffed rich dough with meat. And I think that it's made mostly, the dough is made mostly with butter and then they put some more butter on it and then they put some more butter in it. Oh. And <laughs> it's just, it's so rich, but it's so well done. And there are tinges of, you know, people do things a little bit with saffron and ground meats and fresh and dried cheeses, grana padanas from around here. Um, there, the food, I have had incredible, incredible world-class food from just about every single place I've been, whether it is prepared imaginatively, presented imaginatively, or, or what. I mean, I am astounded at this. I would definitely um, recommend anybody who gets to Milan come over here and spend a few days in the French Quarter District. There are agriturismos, a few hotels, you know, okay. this relay, plenty of places to stay, and really wonderful food. Is there any kind of organization that does marketing for French Corta, or would we be having to go to individual wineries to learn more? You know, is there a tourism board for oh, French Corta? Well, the Francia Corte Consortio, the council, um, they okay. have 
they have a, a wine road. They have okay. recommendations for everything. Okay. You know, they are, they're there for you. So can you send me that link? Yeah. And mm -hmm. I'll link to I that? Will. Okay, now, have you done any shopping at all? What is the, what is, you know, is it an expensive region to be going to visit, Franciacorta? Um, I don't think it's, uh, it's not a poor student place. I okay. think people come out from Milan and they, you know, they may not be the people that have a, um, a mansion at the lakes, but it, it's the, for, you know, middle class, upper middle class, fairly well to do people. Okay. It looks fairly prosperous. The stores look really nice. Um, not overwhelming, but very, very nice and safe and comfortable and small, easy to get around, drive around anywhere in the district, 15, 20 minutes. Wow. So who are you going to be writing about for this? I mean, you're going to be writing about this in Pallet Press in the next couple of weeks or a month? Um, I'm, I'm, we're actually, it's all of us that are here, there are, so some, some sommeliers, some buyers, um, and some journalists, we are really puzzling out how do you present an entirely new sparkling wine to America that's hard to pronounce. <laughs> so we're kind of thinking, can we, you know, what would you tell your people that read your blog, or what would you tell your people in, that you serve wine to in your hotel, and what would I tell people on palletpress.com who have heard the word Franciacorta but know less than nothing about it, because as I said, only about 10% of the tiny amount gets right. in the U.S. now. Right. So we'll have to see. It's an interesting problem for us. Wow. Oh, I can't wait to hear then what kind of, well, you'll give your take on it eventually, and you send me the link so I can link to that. Well, yes, I, will. I have had one or two sparkling wines from Franciacorta, and are we calling it Spamante? Oh, Satin, S-A-T-E-N, Satin, like Satin, is one of their trademark names. S-A-T-E-N. Just, that's just one of the names. The other ones okay. are brewed, non vintage you know, just like in any other sparkling wine. Okay. Thank you, Sue Epstein, reporting from Franciacorta. Thank you, thank you. Thanks, Lynn. See you next time. Okie dokie.